Alt Rock Radio Now is recorded and produced at Music City Studio in Kelowna, BC. Music City Studio is a recording studio and rehearsal space that also hosts jam nights and runs workshops and courses. Visit musiccitystudio.ca for more details. Touring musicians welcome. Welcome to episode 16 of Alt Rock Radio Now. My name is Vincent Jones and I'm your host and I'm sitting here in Kelowna's Music City studio with Mike Peterson to my left and Valora Vadan who's right across from me. Um, this is the first episode we've done guys <laughs> since um, Mike Mike text message here. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> This is the first episode we've done since uh, Daylight Savings, uh, since we sprang ahead. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of neat because I get off work. We're recording this. It's around 5 p.m. right now. So I get off work and I feel like I got out a little early. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I snuck out before the end of the day mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I get to run some errands or whatever. It feels kind of nice. So don't know how you guys feel I about agree. That. No, it's awesome. Yeah. I actually did cleaning yesterday after work, which would never under ordinary circumstances happen. But I felt like, well, A, the sunlight was coming through the windows and suddenly I could see every speck of dust that has ever landed anywhere in the apartment. <laughs> yeah. So that sucked. But also it just it feels so much more energized, right? Like this time of year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you just, you just stay awake because the sun's out, I guess. I'm mm -hmm. so stoked that it's spring. And um, the one thing I will say, though, is in the UK, for whatever reason, I think they don't change the time until next weekend, so this coming weekend. I'm not sure what the reason is for that, but because I watch a lot of, you know, soccer and stuff like that and I keep up with the results, it always throws me off because now they're only, there's only a seven-hour time difference. So I get so used to it being eight hours and knowing that, you know, X time is this time there. Mm -hmm. Now I actually have to stop. And even though it's only one hour, it just throws you off a little bit. You're like, oh, I'll check what score that game is. Or, oh, I'll check this. And you go and you're like, what? <laughs> How's this game not started yet? Anyway, um, and speaking of, of being off work, I just mentioned getting off work early or feeling like you're getting off work early. As I left work there, um, I got out to the car and one of the knuckleheads that I work with, and I'm allowed to say that because I mean it in the nicest possible way, <laughs> they'd, taken, they'd taken nuts, you know, like out of, uh, I don't know what kind of nuts they were. I'm not well up on my nuts. Um, I know you are, Mike. <laughs> but but <laughs> no, there was some kind of, you know, nuts and, and they'd put them all over the car. Well, not all over the car, all on the, the driver's side. So they put them on the handle and on the roof. <laughs> and I came out and he just sort of stopped me for a second. I was like, what the hell is the popcorn on the car? And I got close and I realized it was nuts. So I have my suspicions of who it was. So I cleaned most of them off. Um, and I put a couple on the guy who I think it is. I put a couple on his car just to let him know. I put the big one on his car and a little small one just to let him know that I know what he did and I'm going to be coming back for him. So what I want to ask you guys is, um, are there any really elaborate or amazing um you know, little tricks like that, that maybe when you were in high school that you saw or you was involved with. You mean a prank? Uh, yeah, like a prank, like a car prank. Um, so think on it. You don't have to tell me right now. But as we go through the episode, let's come back to a couple of those. I've got a couple of stories myself even to share. So. I've got a couple, yeah. Yeah, just fun little <laughs> things. It just got me thinking about it on the way here. So think on that one. And uh, while you do that, let's get into a song. Do you mind if I interrupt you quickly? Vince? No, 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 go ahead. Um, so you remember last year, um, was we were doing the Music City podcast at this time. And uh, right around this time, we lost one of our uh, one of our most uh, one of our best listeners, somebody who tuned in every single week, and uh, and that was my dad. So I just wanted to quickly uh, send this uh, this episode out in uh, his memory. He was awesome. He was our biggest fan. Yeah, he's got. Uh, there's still a, a review up there on iTunes from him and all that. So it's good stuff. But uh, yeah, so this one's for him. Awesome. All right. So our first song this week. Thanks for that, Mike. By the way, loved yeah. it. Um, it comes from Black River Killers, a two-man alternative rock band based in Vancouver, and this is their song, Watch Em Go.
All right, so once again, that was Black River Killers with their song, Watch Em Go. Nice dose of energy to get us started on this week's episode with the sun shining outside. <laughs> awesome. Um, one thing I want to mention before we get too far into this week's episode is our amazing contest that we have going on right now. Um, and I should call back, okay, I should call back to the band name. We mentioned it last week. I said, hey, this really awesome band, Delhi, have... Uh, given us some merchandise to give out and I screwed it up. I didn't know I'd screwed it up. It is spelled like Delhi the place. However, I've heard from the band and they've told me that it's actually pronounced Del High. So Del High, not Delhi. I'm going to get it right from now on. Um, and the reason for that is they sort of explained it to me or Ernie explained it to me in an email um, where they where they live in Guelph. There's, I think he said there's a street um, which is, you know, really um what's the word i'm looking for special special to all the guys in the band mm -hmm. and so they named their band after this in this street and it's pronounced like that around where they live and then they didn't realize until after they started putting their stuff online and all that that oh this is actually going to be a problem people are going to mispronounce it who aren't from the area right. and it's going to be really bad for seo and people finding <laughs> us online so they've sort of discovered that now but uh these guys are awesome i want to make sure we get the name right it's del high and they've given us some really awesome merchandise. They've given us a great T-shirt, which I yeah, mentioned last week. I checked them out. They're badass. Yeah, yeah right? Pretty yeah. cool, eh? Yeah. And they're also they're, uh, a physical copy of their record. So you can enter the contest still. We're going to be running it until we record next week's episode. So on the next show we do, we will be announcing our winner. All you've got to do is go over to our Facebook page. Uh, look for Alt Rock Radio now and share the photo that we've got up there for the contest. Share it publicly on your timeline and you will be entered. I think so far we've had, last time I checked, we'd had seven shares, but a couple of them are illegitimate. Uh, ones from me, uh, I think Ernie himself may have shared it, the band may have shared it. So there's a good chance of winning if you get in on it now. Uh, pretty high chance, in fact. So keep that in mind. Go check them out on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll dig. And of course, check out Del High's music oh it's gonna i'm gonna make sure i have to make sure i get that right from now on catch myself um before we get into our next song do either of you guys want to share a, a car story yet or are you still thinking on it i've got one yeah um, go for it i'm not a 10 year old boy so i have to think <laughs> on it some more when i was in high school there was this guy who had a, a firefly and i don't remember those cars are just super small and uh just about every day we'd get a group of us and we'd go out to the parking lot and it was super light car. So we could actually with six guys pick this thing up off the ground and move it wherever. Right. So we would every day pretty much wedge it between two other cars that were, uh, it was like angle parking and he'd be angle parking there, but we'd basically take him and put his car. So it was like parallel park between the other two cars <laughs> and <laughs> drove the poor guy crazy. But <laughs> that's, that's pretty that's awesome. You get for having a light car, I guess. <laughs> That's That'll awesome. teach him for having one of those little light cars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into our next song. Uh, next up, we're going to spin, spin a tune from a Milwaukee uh, band. They're called Estates. They're a, a rock trio. And this is their song. It's called Paint You in a Bad Light. <laughs> Gestures are slim and quick
So once again, that was Estates, and their song is called Paint You in a Bad Light. They're from Milwaukee, which is, of course, in Wisconsin. And uh, do you know what I think of when I think of that? Beer? No, no, that's a good call, though. <laughs> that's the first thing that came to my mind. What, what, what next? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That 70s show. Oh. Oh, yeah. Just no, me, hey? Just, just me? Just you. All well, right. You know, at the beginning yeah. on the intro, he goes, hello, Wisconsin. Oh, or right. right at the end, I can't remember. No, I think, I think you're right. Just, you know, it's a word association, right? So yeah. I, I, Mike says, you say Milwaukee, Mike says beer. You say Milwaukee, I say old. <laughs> yeah, I was totally. <laughs> but, but you're going with that 70s show. So that's cool. That yeah. probably means that you're healthier of mind and body than we are. No, it just means I don't really like old mill. <laughs> I, I don't either. But. You don't have to like it to be familiar with it. No, that's true. I just wasn't thinking. But yeah, old mill would probably be, all right, whatever, old mill. In. <laughs> I pulled up um, Ernie's email, by the way, just by the way, just when the song was playing there. And what I want to say is actually the street, it's actually where the band members were born. So that makes it pretty cool. It's where the main hospital is. Oh, cool. In Guelph. So Del High Street. Um, and that's where they were born. So it is really special to them and their families, obviously. Um, so Del High. Anyway. Good. <laughs> I think we got it. We covered it. We're all good. <laughs> yeah. I've made up for It's well established. You know, I, I felt really bad because even though even though I had no way of knowing, right? And 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 Ernie, I guess, had forgot to tell me beforehand I hadn't thought of it. Um I just felt really bad. I was like, oh, but yeah, we fixed it now anyway. I want to share one of my uh car prank stories now, if you don't mind. Viewers, you gonna say something? No, I just was gonna say, I mean, as somebody who's grown up with an unusual name, like it just it's part of the territory. Like you can't take it personally. It's just how it goes. So, like, you know, I'm oh, yeah, sure that they don't have a problem with it. And you no, they don't feel bad about it. Mm. Sorry, I'm talking over you. That's not very good, is it? No, carry on. <laughs> you did say my name wrong for about a year, so <laughs> <laughs> we just covered this too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Make you feel even worse. You know, that was you could have told me that. <laughs> <laughs> I was in, it was it was it was sort of just happened that you would say it, and I said, oh, okay, today I got it. After recording, I'll, I'll let him know that he's saying it wrong, and then I would forget. And then we would record the next episode, same thing, same thing. And it got to a point where we're just like, I'm not even going to bother. Now it's just horrible. Now it's just really, really, really awkward to bring it up. <laughs> yeah. I've told yeah. you, Martin Gamps Pedersen, who is a Danish footballer who used to play for Blackburn Rovers in the Premier League. That's why. And then Henrik Pedersen played for, for Bolton Wanderers. These all have the same spelling name for you. So That's I'm just right. like, oh, it's Mike Pedersen. Then you tell me it's Peterson. And I'm like, whoa, my mind is blown. <laughs> like. You know, who knew that people said stuff differently in other places? It is Danish. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Maybe. Maybe mine's a European pronunciation, Mike. Yeah. Maybe you've been saying it wrong your whole life. Maybe. Probably not. Speaking <laughs> of pronunciations and meetings, we actually just, sorry, well, I'll, let you, I'll let you finish later. You know, we did, well, I'll just pull a Kanye West on you. It's so <laughs> rare for that to get said to me. <laughs> um, I was going to say that uh, you, Vince and I were actually just having a conversation um, like two days ago or a day ago. And we realized that homely in Canada does not mean the same thing that it means in the UK, oh. which was really, really interesting. Yeah. So if Vince said that um, you looked really homely, he wouldn't mean you look really horrible right. and you should be hidden from light in the world for the rest of forever. He'd just mean that you look like home, you look like comfortable, you look mm. like grandma's house or something, you know? Right. Whereas obviously here it's a bit of an insult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So is there more to this story or? No, nah, no, not really. No, no that's, that's kind of pretty much it. <laughs> just, just the difference in, in, in uh, what the word means across yeah. cultures. Yeah, homely would be like, oh, it reminds you of home. It's like grandma's house yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But I guess here in Canada, it'd be kind of insulting to say, oh, it's nice and homely in here. Like it's, it's cozy. Nope. <laughs> not the same thing. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get to my prank now, which is what I was going to oh, say. Okay. And I'll be quick and then we'll get into a song. I think we'll do... Uh, do you want to do your song, V? When sure. we come back? Okay. Um, so anyway, this story in particular involves uh, shaving cream. Now, I don't know if this is true, but um, we got told when we were younger that if you put shaving cream on a vehicle, like if you write something on it in shaving cream, mm -hmm. it rusts if you leave it long enough. It will, it will rust the paint of the vehicle. Well, we didn't know if this was true, but being teenage boys and being stupid... We thought we would try it out. Um, and so it was after drama class one night. And we met, a bunch of us were messing around. And we had, you know, someone had shaving cream and sprayed it on a vehicle. And we were all messing around. But there was such a commotion. 
from this, you know, people were doing it and, and messing around that one of the teachers from the drama school ended up coming out and catching us sort of in the act of doing this. So it got found before it, we even had a chance to test it really. And mm. then that was sort of the end of it. Um, so we don't know if it actually works, but I guess that's not really a prank so much of a, as a urban legend. And I'm wondering if it's true. Of a failed prank. Yeah, that kind of sucked. Actually. <laughs> I don't really know. Once I started telling the story, I was like, oh, we didn't actually do that though. We kind of started doing it and I was sort of involved. So yeah, I guess I'll just shut up now and we should play a song. <laughs> but yeah, if anybody knows if shaving cream does rust, a vehicle it would be interesting to know because we did get told that and we were like oh we'll write something really insulting like i'm a dick on this car <laughs> and watch it rust but i was just i don't think i was actually doing it i was just watching you know mm. i was being a good kid sure, sure thing yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah okay <laughs> anyway before you uh continue on with yourself there uh my track this week is called uh okay so first of all i'm pretty sure that this band's stuff is all french and just because I live in Canada it doesn't mean that I speak French. So I'm going to do my best. I apologize if I'm getting it wrong. Um, yeah. So <laughs> the band is called uh, Les, An- Les, An- Les Anarchistes. And uh, the song is called Juno. And um, it's just really, really awesome. I think you guys are going to like it. Check it out. I found my breath in a sea of
So once again, that was Juno from L'Anarchiste. Merci. <laughs> C'est magnifique. <laughs> okay, that's about the limit of my French. Cool. And it was, it was magnifique. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, guess what? What? You're going to laugh when I say this. But I think it's relevant. I think it's relevant. Um, Morrissey. See, as soon as I say it. Oh, my it. God. <laughs> no, no, seriously, though, this is relevant. He's announced the name of his new album. Um, it's going to be called World Peace is None of Your Business. So that's us told. Um, and it's going to be a 12-track record, and it's provisionally set for release in June slash July. Mm. So it's coming. Exciting. And you can't stop it, Mike. I can't stop it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Sorry, what was you going to say? I just was going to say, so that's uh, quite the um, ironic, because he'll, he'll be using that title ironically. Because he thinks world peace is everybody's business. Mm, yeah, didn't really think of it like that, but yeah. Yeah. I challenge you next week for an entire episode with no Morris or Smith references. But then what would my life be if I was able to get through an hour of talking about music without mentioning Well, you just Morris. replace him with Blink. Yeah, I could. <laughs> I have to say Mark Hoppus's tweets are awesome. I'm just going to Blink. Anyway. <laughs> Speaking of Morrissey, though, coming back to Morrissey, I do want to say we did our epic stories. We did our epic stories not that long ago, right? Yeah, get away from it. <laughs> and no, well, the reason I'm saying that is because the one of mine, which I, I got Vita share because I was talking so much that episode, was about Morrissey, right? It was about us going yeah. down to the US on $600, a drive to LA. And so what I want to do is anybody out there who has their own epic story, we haven't heard from any listeners yet, but if you have one, feel free to send us an email. Uh, you can find our email address. It's um, arrnow at gmail.com, but you can find it as well through our Facebook page uh, or you can message us on Facebook, however you want to do it. But we'd love to hear some of your stories. So mm -hmm. feel free to share them with us. You know, they don't have to be long. They don't have to be even that amazing. Uh, well, they do have to be amazing, <laughs> but they don't have to be long. Uh, they can be just a few lines, maybe a paragraph. So uh, keep that in mind. We would love to hear from you. And um, on the subject of our social media, let's bang it out all at once. Um, if you're wondering about any of the bands that we've had on the show, what we do when every episode comes out is we tag the bands over on our Facebook page. So you can find them there and uh, you can go and like them, you know, buy their music, all that stuff. So keep that in mind as well. That's where you will find any of the acts that we have on our show. And uh, let's get into our next song. Our next tune this week comes from Edmonton-based alt-pop soul singer-songwriter Noella mm. Charles. Now, Noella's a bit of a curveball in that uh, she's not a rock artist, uh, but we said in the beginning that we were going to throw a few of those at you, so here we go. Um, Noella's just awesome. You're going to really love her. I stumbled across her music over on Bandcamp, and uh, yeah, like I say, I just really dig it, and I think you're going to love it too. She's uh, won an Edmonton Music Award, and this is her song, You Got Me. I've got no words, I've got no feeling You just take them away like I don't need them Now I can't cry no more, can't even lie no more You've got me truly believing that Living ain't living until you're living here with me
All right, so we just heard from the very soulful Nuella Charles, and that was her song, You Got Me. Um, now, I don't know, this is a good segue, and you, you'll like what I did here. I don't know if you guys heard this story, but it involves President Obama and uh, a concert that was recently at the White House. Okay, so it's a little funny. Um, well, maybe it's not that funny, but basically what happened is, last Thursday, I think it was, um, there was a concert of, as part of Women's History Month, and it celebrated Women of Soul. So hence my Nuella reference there with a soulful track. And um, the show featured, you know, all these legends. So you had like Aretha Franklin, um, Ariana Grande, Melissa Etheridge, among others. Like it was just awesome stuff, right? Um, anyway, one of Franklin's famous songs is Respect, you know, and she spells out R-E-S-P-E-C-T in the song. Mm -hmm. Well, in his speech, the president attempted to spell it. Uh oh. And he screwed it up. <laughs> <laughs> In his speech. <laughs> so, you know, don't give up the day job, Barack, or anything <laughs> like that. You know, don't don't decide you want to become a, a singer or anything. But I have to sympathize with, with President Obama, actually, um, which is probably not something you'd hear me. Well, I like Obama. I am, I am liberal, but it's not something you would hear me say on the show usually. I don't really have opportunity to sympathize with the President of the United States. But when you're on the spot like that, I think I mentioned it a few episodes back, your brain just does funny things mm -hmm. sometimes. Obviously, he knows how to spell respect. But just in the moment, spelling it out and having to do it letter for letter, he just sort of screwed it up. And I screwed up a few things in my time. So I do sympathize. I heard that the uh, the Pope dropped an F-bomb. Did you hear that? No, I didn't hear that one. I saw the headlines, <laughs> but I didn't read the article. Yeah, it's not as, as good as it sounds. But um, I guess there's a, a word in Italian. Um, there's two words that are, are pretty close um, together. And he used the wrong one, which was fuck. I can't remember... Um, the difference between the two of them, but they're very close. And I think uh, Italian isn't his first language, so it's actually something that happens pretty commonly. Um, but it's something you should obviously watch for and maybe <laughs> warn the, the Pope of before he does his speech. <laughs> uh, wow. But kind of funny anyway, so people were, you know. So what he's saying is when I screw things up, like, uh, you know, the names of certain states in the United States, um, <laughs> I, I don't have to feel like... You know, I'm extremely dumb. I can just think, hey, I am like President Obama or the Pope. That's nice. right. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it is. question is, when is. do I get a Pope mobile, though? Because <laughs> those are pimping rides. <laughs> We're you know, I was going to say in, in regards to the Obama thing, um, when I was a kid, I was in choir and I was involved in like the whole acting, theater, music thing. And uh, our music teacher uh, had set... Uh, the poem Flanders Fields to music in Flanders Fields was she had it set to music and so it wasn't until I was about 12 that I had to learn how to recite the poem without music and it was so hard because hmm. all of the lines were set to music for me so for me to say it out loud and not have the melody or the cadence in my voice was really really difficult but I was reciting the poem for the entire school for our, for our Remembrance Day ceremonies um so i had to get it and it took i don't think i've ever rehearsed something so hard in my life it was so difficult to do so i can imagine being obama i'd like to try and say r-e-s-p-e-c-t and not right r-e-s-p-e-c-t like that yeah and not like that um <laughs> it's it's much more difficult than you would think it would be mm -hmm. no i i told like i say i totally sympathize um i could imagine mm. good point Mike, do you uh, have a song for us? I do. Um, this is a tune we did um, last summer. It was with uh, Jody Deutsch. Um, she, at the time, was out of Kamloops, and now she's based, um, I think she's in Calgary um, now. And that's, she's messaging me right now, actually, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> I think we just got permission to use the track. Uh, but anyways, um, we did the song last summer, and it was part of um, Music BC and uh, K96.3 um, sort of funded the recording um, for I can't, it was just a handful of artists, and uh, they paired them up with local studios um, around the Okanagan, uh, and they're obviously Okanagan artists, so it's a pretty cool project, and uh, I'm not sure if it's going to happen this year, but hopefully it does. Um, anyways, a uh, cool thing about this track was it actually involved um cam and mitch from wild sun um so you hear some beautiful violin from mitch and some great drumming from cam and uh, also some mandolin from uh, garrett from uh, my kind of karma 
So a good cool. mix of local guys because um, she doesn't have a band, so we kind of brought in session players and, and those guys were all available for it. So it was pretty cool. Dude, uh, why didn't you bring me in on bass? Next time. You've seen my skills. Yeah, it had a battery <laughs> in it, so I didn't want to bring you in. <laughs> That's a bit of an inside joke. I think we'll have to share that sometime. Anyway, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so the song I'm going to play is called Sarah.
That was Sarah from Jody Deutsch, and uh, like I said, she was messaging me as I was saying that, and she's actually in Banff now, so if you're going through the area, see if you can check her out live there. Cool. You mentioned that you had to sort of improvise a band for her there. Yeah. Um, and uh, with this episode coming out on March 13th, one of the things I did is I, I went to Google, and I did a little searching, and I uh, got some music birthdays for March 13th. So, um, the birthdays for March 13th include Adam Clayton, who's the bass player in U2. By the way, their new song, I don't know if you guys have heard it, I think no, it's I called haven't. Invisible. I really like it. Cool. It's good. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Neil Sadaka and Danny Kerwin, who's a singer and guitarist and songwriter with Fleetwood Mac from 1968 to 1972. Nice. So, um, you know, maybe that could be, if you build a band for her again, you could pull the March the 13th guys. And- <laughs> No, I don't really know where I'm going with that. The guys who you had on were awesome. I'm not. I'm not saying they weren't <laughs> awesome. I just. I don't know. This is weird now. <laughs> really awkward. Really fast. <laughs> it did go really awkward, didn't it? <laughs> I'm so good at making stuff awkward. I'm sure that it makes perfect sense in in your head, and the path is all laid out. No, but I I just know that Mike and I are both sitting here, just looking at you, being like, "Where is he going with this? How is this connected?" <laughs> and then you get to the end, and we're like. Kind of, I guess. <laughs> well, it made maybe. it made sense to me in my head, and then I started saying it, and I was like, "Oh, well, I don't mean that, you know, that you should replace <laughs> the guys who she had because those guys are awesome." Like, I don't mean it like that. I was just sort of making a joke, and now it's got really messed up, and it sucks. I, I, I guess it, I just I love how um, <laughs> I never know anybody whose birthday you're reciting off. I'm always like, "Who is that?" And you'll mention the band, and I'll be like. Yeah, okay. Okay. But like, I never, we ne- we never seem to land on a day of birthdays where I'm like, oh yeah, I know who that person is. I really love their stuff. Well, that's not my fault. I can't make the birthdays be different. Oh, I can't be should. like, oh, it's Morris's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, is May 22nd. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know you two. I'm sure you know Neil Sadaka. You've heard his name at least. And then Fleetwood Mac, you know, as well. So you just sort of... Trying yeah. to be, stop trying to be controversial. I'm, not. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway. Carry on. I will carry on. Thank you very much for the permission, though. You're welcome. Our penultimate song this week comes from Chicago indie pop rock trio, Community Service. And these guys put out their debut album, Steve's Basement, in November of last year. And we're going to listen to a song from that record. This is Briscoe. Do you want to go to film school? <laughs> Yeah, I don't want- 
looked in mine Would you see me? So once again, that was Community Service with their song, Briscoe, Do You Want to Go to Film School? Um, obviously, music, we know this as music lovers, can have a lot of power and it brings all sorts of pleasure. Mike, don't look at me like that. <laughs> um, well, there's a flip side to that as well. The inability to enjoy music, this is another recent uh, thing that was in the news, has been recognized as a brain condition. So apparently this is a condition where you can hear the music, you can understand it and the emotions it's supposed to elicit in you and all that. But basically it has, uh, you get nothing out of it. It has no effect on you. It just doesn't mm. rouse anything. And uh, apparently it affects around 2% of the population. So it sounds terrible. Yeah. Those poor folks. I mean, if you yeah. think about it, that explains so much though. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'm sure everybody's run across somebody who they'll just be like, no, I just don't really like any bands. I just don't like, you know, I just don't care. I just don't like music. And you're like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Um, but it, it's like, it's like, um, auditory color blindness. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently many people sort of, because, you know, everybody, like, not everybody, obviously, but a lot of people really love music and are really passionate about it. And, uh, um, you know, apparently these people who have it, they sort of keep it hidden because, you know, it's not cool to be like, oh, I hate music, like, music, all music sucks, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, those poor guys, if you think about it, they'd have to listen to a show like this for the conversation, which, <laughs> which <laughs> just is shows you how bad it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> shows you how important this condition is. I wonder if they could at least appreciate the poetry in some music, like the, the lyrical content. Yeah. But it won't be the same. I don't know. I just find that really, really interesting. I find that really fascinating. Somebody should give them all a Nicki Minaj CD and just be like, hey, listen to this. Appreciate the poetic beauty of this. I think it should be a compilation. I think that Fergie should be in there too. <laughs> all right. Let's get into our... <laughs> Let's get into our final song. Uh, it comes from Boston Indie Rock Trio. We've had a lot of trios on this week's episode. Um, they're called Woven Woods. And they make songs... Uh, sorry, they make songs... How long am I trying to say here? Sad songs you could have sworn were happy. That's what they make. Mm. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> and this is their song, Trying to Find a Body. I remember your glare Before you slammed the car door Your words hung in the air to the house trying to calm me down but I never felt so far from love I never felt so far from love like this was trying to find a body you're so far
So once again, that was Woven Woods, and that was their song, Trying to Find a Body. We were just debating how many trios we'd had on there. I didn't get a chance to add it up, though. We thought maybe it was a trio of trios, which is... Uh... Trio squared. <laughs> yeah, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Um, before we go here, I just want to say, um, you can find us on YouTube. I don't know where you're listening to this. You could be listening to us on iTunes or you could be listening to us on YouTube. If you're listening to us on iTunes or YouTube, whichever, you can subscribe on either platform. So please make sure you do that. You can also, you know, comment uh, on YouTube. You can share it with your friends. You can leave a rating or review for us over on iTunes. So any of that stuff would be really greatly appreciated. So please keep that in mind. But more important than all that, go and check out the bands that we've had on this episode. A number of them. Um, have got their music available for Name Your Price over in Bandcamp. So obviously mm-hmm. that doesn't strictly mean free. <laughs> um, it means sort of, you know, pay what you can maybe or pay what you think it's worth. Um, but, you know, if you're broke and you've only got, you know, three bucks to spend on some new music, you know, send it their way and I'm sure they'll appreciate it. And you'll get some nice new music for your collection as well. So keep that in mind. Search them out through our Facebook page. And uh, please come back next week for episode 17. Goodbye for now. Alt Rock Radio Now is brought to you in part by Czech Creative. Czech Creative is a Kelowna-based digital agency.